everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now you might be looking at the table and thinking to yourself, gosh, Backyard Bullion, what are you doing today? Are you going to be cooking up some silver? Well, no, I'm not cooking up the silver, but we are going to use this pot uh, and these weighing scales and this 100 ounce bar to do a little bit of science, a little bit of learning today. We're going to do a specific gravity test. Now, we're going to do it on this 100 ounce bar because when I unveiled it, there were a few people on my channel who um, commented saying fake bar. They were like, it has to be fake, it must be fake. It's going to have a lead core or, you know, tungsten core or whatever core, it's not real. Uh, and, you know, that irked me a little bit. I know my silver, I know this is a genuine bar. Bought it off a reputable, reputable uh, seller off the Silver Forum. Um, but, you know, I suppose at the end of the day, it could be fake. There could be uh, elements that are in there that are fake. From experience of handling so much silver as I have, I can pretty much say with degree of certainty without doing this test that this is a real silver bar. One thing that you can do right off the bat at home is do simple tests, and this is no different. Now, I have done specific gravity tests on my channel before, and if you'd like to see those videos, then there's links in the description below. They were on much smaller items, though, and I want to illustrate today that you can do specific gravity tests, even on these 100-ounce bars, and have a very, very good degree of accuracy, uh, you know, degree of certainty within your own mind that something is 999 silver. Of course, it's not going to be 100% definitive. There really are no other ways to do that than by basically drilling holes into the bar and taking samples from all over the bar. But of course, that's going to be destructively testing the bar. Now, I've talked about testing silver a lot on my channel before, and there's various different methods that one can employ. However, for a big bar like this, there are a few of those methods which are not particularly appropriate. So now, one of the methods I talk about for coins is a ping test. Uh, now, a big bar like this is not going to have a ping. It's not going to resonate like a coin, even if I tap it with something metallic. I've got a little magnet here. You can hear a sort of dull thud, and that's not really anything more than just, you know, a big bar of silver. It's not going to make those big noises, those big pinging noises. Now, a little neodymium magnet, however, if it's going to go over the bed and coat, will actually slide down nicely that it would on a silver coin. Uh, but that is that is st sticking now because there's little bits of moisture on there. Uh, that doesn't illustrate my point very well. But you can see that the magnet is sliding down very nicely as it would on a silver coin. So we know that that is pretty good. But these bars are very big and very thick. Uh, so it might have a lead core, but there will be enough thickness of the silver so that the magnet actually still reacts in the same way. So that's not necessarily definitive in its own right. So a specific gravity test is what I would say is your best bet for a home testing solution or remedy. It is, in my book, the definitive test that one can do at home. And it's very easy to do at home as well. All you need is some water, some weighing scales, and a little bit of string or dental floss or whatever to tie around the bar. Of course, you can see I've pre-tied my bar so that we're not going to faff around doing that. Now, specific gravity is uh, essentially the ratio between the tested subject and a known subject. So in this case, we're testing the specific gravity of silver in relation to water. The ratio is what we're interested in here. And if we get a certain number as the result from this test, which is well known that silver has a specific gravity of 10.49, uh, so it's anywhere between 10.4 and 10.5, because there is a kind of an, a, an error an error rate in doing these tests. Specific gravity will vary from a number of different factors, but you can be pretty much certain that if something comes out between 10.4 and 10.5, it is going to be pure 999 silver. Sterling silver has a specific gravity uh, lower than that. It's about 10.3, I think it is. Uh, obviously, there are different alloys of silver and gold out there, which all have different specific gravities, and you can work those out, and then you can do tests on them to work it out. So it's not only on silver, it's not only on big bars, you can do it on small pieces. However, it is a bit of a limited test in the sense that it basically measures the volume. The displacement of water is what is going to cause uh, the kind of the weight change that you'll see on the scales when we put this in the water. Uh, and that is what is going to be measured. So if you've got a piece which has got a hollow center, or if you've got a piece which has got some uh, big 3D aspects and the water might not uh, get into all of it, or if it's got an air pocket or air bubble in it, uh, you're not going to get a true uh, result. And that is something to factor in if you are looking to do a specific gravity test. So the first thing that you need to do, and it's a very simple process, and you can Google this. Uh, there's loads of different videos out there. As I said, I've done a number of them before in the past as well. But this is what you do. So you take your subject that you want to test and you weigh it first. So that's always a good sign straight off the bat. You know, 100 ounces should weigh 3.1 uh, 3 
uh, 05 kilos. Um, so that is, you know, 3.12 kilos, that's fine. There's obviously a little bit of weight for the string on there, but that is fine. Record that weight, that is what you want to do. So we're going to do it in grams. So it's 3121. And you know, as I said, there will be a bit of error margin in this because of the uh, the sort of you know the string on there. The atmospheric pressure even makes a difference along these uh, things as well. So there's a whole host of different things, but overall, it will be a pretty accurate test. The next thing you want to do is to get your scales and have the water in them, and you want to zero the scales. Now you want to try and have the scales, uh, sorry, the water in the scales as calm as possible because obviously if the water is fluctuating around, you will get little fluctuations in weight. So, you know, if, if you've just put it on there and it's, you know, bumping around big waves, just wait for it to calm down and then you can go ahead and do the next step. So the next step is to get your silver bar suspended in the water and it's really important that it's suspended. You don't want to just put it in and have it touching the sides or the bottom. So I've got here my string around the bar and I'm very carefully balancing it and putting it in the water and you want to get it under the meniscus of the water, not touching any sides. And then you want to look at the weighing scales. Now, as you can see, there are numbers and they're flitting up and down. That's because the water is moving as I'm holding this bar. So just take a kind of an average. If you see a number that flits up more often than others. So here we're looking around the 299, 300 mark, I think. It's going up and down a little bit, but that's just the way it goes. So write that number down. We're going to write down 300. So you'll take the bar out and you'll notice that the scales are negative. They'll be lower than they were when they started. That's because some of the water has been taken out of the pot on the bar. So don't worry about that number changing. Uh, just record the number of the weight of the bar, or sorry, the weight of the suspension of the bar, which was 300. Then what you're going to do, very simple maths, you're going to divide the top number by the second number and that will give you, let's get my calculator out so we can get accurate number move that across carefully, we don't want water flying everywhere. Would have been sensible to have your calculator out and ready, Backyard Bullion, yes I know it would, but that's far too much thinking ahead for my liking. So here we go, so what we do is we do 3, 1, 2, 1, and we divide that by 300, and those of you who are very good at maths will have already worked it out that it is 10.403. So that is a very good indication that this is 999 silver. Now of course there are um, you know other factors at play here that are you know, it was wobbling around, the number wasn't quite accurate. Uh, you know, it could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less. The string on the bar even is playing uh, into the factor a little bit. And uh, we can play around here. So if we, uh, you know, factor in that the, maybe the weight of the bar is 3, 1, let's call it 1, 5, instead of that number there, and we divide by, uh, just trying to get my calculator out. So if we Divide that by 295, for example, because we saw that number quite a lot on there. That would end up being 10.55, which is, again, another great number for something that's 99 silver. Again, if it was 3121, and we divide that by, um, I don't know, 298, which was a number, another number, you know, you can see that the, the different numbers there, so 3121 divided by uh, 298 equals 10.47. So you can see that there's a very little bit of kind of degree of accuracy error in there based on how your scales are, how accurate your scales are, how steady you are holding it. You can of course rig up a contraption that can hold it completely steady. That takes a lot more time and energy, but ultimately, you know, you're gonna get roughly the same results. What you're not looking for is something that comes out and it's like 8.1 or 8.3 or 9.4 or something like that. That would be a warning sign. But if it's coming out at 10.4 as we did right there, that's absolutely fine. And as you can see, if you've got a little bit of margin and error on either of these numbers, you get the right result. So, you know, ultimately that is how you do a specific gravity test, even on a big old chunky bar like this Baird & Co 100 ounce bar. And it's that simple. It didn't take long at all. It wasn't very complicated. You're not doing a whole host of really complicated maths. Of course, if you've got an alloy piece of silver, if you've got a big uh, lump of sterling silver or something you've bought off eBay that just uh, is a whole bunch of mixed metals, that might be a bit more difficult to do a specific gravity test on. But, you know, this is a pretty good indication. It's not foolproof, though, because obviously there are different alloys of silver out there or different alloys of metals out there that will have similar specific gravity tests. Uh, but ultimately you've got to look at it like this. I think for a big old bar like this, the amount of energy and effort and cost that it would go into uh, having 
you know, a core in the silver which would have a relatively similar specific gravity, there's a lot of energy and effort in there for what is essentially not very much profit to be had. If you're taking maybe five, ten ounces of silver out of this bar and replacing it with something else, there's not a great deal of money to be earned in that. Whereas if you've got a hundred kilo gold bar and you're using tungsten perhaps to plug that bar, then there's obviously a lot more financial benefit to be had. So you don't often find a lot of these fakes out there. But very interestingly, I did hear a very um, disturbing story from the Edinburgh Assay Office about uh, 10 years ago, there was a big, um, con not, not I was going to say some conspiracy, there was a big um, kind of discovery of some plugged silver bars which were hallmarked I think by the Sheffield Assay Office so that inspired all of the different assay officers to take a lot harder a stance on testing bullion bars before hallmarks were placed on which is why you see a lot of drill testing and destructive testing from Edinburgh Assay Office and others as well but anyway that is how you do a specific gravity test on a 100 ounce bar. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. If you did, please put a thumbs up on this video and share it around on your social media. That would be very helpful for everything that I do here on my channel to help continue to grow it as well. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, I've done other specific gravity test videos. They are linked down in the description below. But if generally you want to see more videos like this in the future, then please do let me know and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications when I upload future videos, then make sure you hit that alarm bell. Otherwise, that is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching, and please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.